Uh, morning, everyone. Um, hope that everyone's doing well. Um, thanks for joining us, Mr. Edwards, uh, Ms. Webb, and Junior Dell. Um, thanks for joining us. Um, how, 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 how have you guys been coping with the summer? Summer is here and the sun is, is blazing on us all. How, how are you guys coping? Can you let us know in the comments box? Off for the presentation. I don't, don't have to be shy. Um, I'll say um, it's it's been very warm for me. I'm getting used to this this summer heat all over again. Um, it's, it's summer heat is up on us. So I hope you guys are are coping well during this summer period. But. Yeah, the rain, the rain was definitely welcome down front team. Definitely welcome to the as as you mentioned, the heat is the heat is heat has been dreadful, man. So uh, I should we'll share the same sentiments. The rain was definitely welcome. And it's also good for our dams in terms of filling up our dams. So rain is great. It's 10 o'clock. Right, so um, it's 10 o'clock. Um, thanks, Francine, for participating in our brief chat. Uh, let's kick it off now. So good morning again, uh, or good day, depending on where you are, to everyone that has joined us. Um, as we were mentioning, it, you know, it's the first days of summer. So, you know, it, I was wondering how everyone was coping in this heat. Um, you can continue to let us know in the comments box um, during the chat. Um, but while you do that, um, again, I want to thank you for joining another Spatial Innovation webinar. Um, in this one, we will learn more about Ezra's ArcGIS field applications developed to digitally transform your organizational field operations. Uh, morning, Mr. Dell. Our key presenter is uh, Ms. Nicola Simpson Lake, Senior Geospatial Solutions Specialist here at Spatial. And alongside her, uh, Mr. Roshan Clark, Deputy CEO, and myself, Matthew Webster, uh, Vice President of Corporate Services Division here. Uh, as mentioned in our communications, the topic, as you can see on your screen, is improving your organization's field operations with ArcGIS field apps, a topic chosen by you, our audience. Um, thanks again for those that did participate in the survey. Um, it's, it's been really helpful and it's something that we want to carry forward. Uh, but before I go any um, further, um, I just say again, the, the summer is really hot. So I hope you guys are, are um, safe to say that we're all burning up and welcoming more rain. And without further ado, um, I'm gonna pass over to Roshan to add a little bit more context uh, to, the, to today's topic. Uh, Roshan, you with us? Hi, morning, good afternoon. Can you hear me clearly, Matthew? Uh, hearing you perfectly. Okay, awesome. All right, so morning, good morning, good day, good afternoon, or even good night to our audience, our participants on this, um, our sixth staging of the Spatial Webinar Series. Um, if you're joining for the first time, we say welcome. And if you're returning and you're a regular for our webinar series, we say welcome back. Um, the Spatial Webinar Series is a monthly effort by Spatial Innovation to keep our market, our colleagues across the Caribbean and the wider world up to speed with the latest and greatest in geospatial technology. Um, of course, if you know our company, we carry many different brands, we provide solutions for many different types of customers, um, but the brunt of it is placed on GIS and we are um, pro distributors of Esri as well as other brands such as Trimble, Sensefly, Emlid, and the list goes on. Um, our topic for today is improving your organization's field operation. 
with ArcGIS field apps. Now, um, for me as a deputy CEO, I, I didn't introduce myself properly. I'm the deputy CEO of Spatial. And um, as Matthew alluded to earlier, what we have done with this webinar is approach it a little different. Um, we decided to ask you, our audience and our colleagues, um, what you would like to see um, us present on as a company. So instead of us pushing what, what we already know is the latest, um, sometimes there are so many things that have developed within GIS um, within any month that it's also good to be guided by the audience as to what works best for you or what you're most interested in and what um, is most related to your, to your profession or to your interests. So having said that, we sent out a survey and the, res the response was loud and resounding that everyone wanted to get more information about field apps. And that is what guided us to reach out to our um, astute uh, colleague, Miss Nicola Simpson-Lake, who will be the keynote speaker for today and she will walk us through um, all that, that there is to know about um, improving your organization's field operation with RGIS field apps. Uh, before I hand over to her though, I just have two announcements to share with the team and to share with you, our listeners. One is that uh, it's a gentle reminder that the Esri user conference is coming up in July. Um, if you are familiar with it, you know that this is the hallmark event for GIS as a conference globally. Um, of course, with the pandemic, we have, have this being done now in a virtual space, but we encourage everyone to get registered. It's, there's no cost to attend um, the plenary. If your organization, you're already a customer and you're up to date with your maintenance, you can access not only the plenary, plenary but also all of these, I mean, a wealth, uh, 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 a plethora of um, workshops about um, different topics that may be of interest to you that normally you would have to probably invest to get these kind of workshops but now you have the access um, to learn from subject matter experts um, to throw ideas throw questions um, and just to learn about what Ezra is coming with so I encourage everyone to get registered for the UC if you haven't it is supposed to be on Ju July 12th so you still have at least two weeks, but we encourage everyone to get registered as soon as possible. Um, the other announcement is that there is a new channel, or actually two new channels for our support that we offer to our customers. As you would have known, we offer technical support through our partners in Latin America, um, the Columbia office, um, the, which is the LATAM regional center for tech support, and Spatial has partnered with this um, this body of, of experts from Colombia to deliver tech support. And of course, it was normally just through an email or through a web form, but now we have stepped it up a, a, a notch further to say there's actually an app that you can download, the Esri Support Spatial Caribbean app. And this will allow you to have access to support on your, at your fingertips to, to submit a case, to um, stay up to date with what uh, as a case um, develops, um, to reach out and chat, um, and so many more um, benefits to having the app. So this is a really, really good announcement. This is a really, really, um, we, we feel good that this is another um, tool that we have passed on to our customers. Um, we encourage you to download the app today um, on either your Google Store or your iOS and um, give us feedback if you're having any challenges. Um, and of course, there's also a phone line that you can now call in to get access to, to tech support. Um, so we will share that before the end of the program. So having said that, um, I ask you to just sit back, relax, and enjoy this webinar. Um, this is really dedicated to folks from, you know, I mean, anyone can use it that has any field operations, but we know that for our, our colleagues that are doing census from the stats group, for our colleagues that are doing surveys in the field, for our colleagues that are, um, want to um, monitor um, points of interest such as hydrants, for, for water organizations, or um, uh, any form of in-the-field operations, this may be very beneficial to you to 
to listen to Nicola's presentation for the next uh, few minutes, the next half hour or so. So having said that, I will pass over to Nicola, and I hope you do enjoy the special webinar series. Afterwards, we'll have some Q&A, and then um, we will definitely have this posted on our YouTube channel for you to um, watch again afterwards. All right, having said that, I'll pass over to you, Nicola. Good morning. Thank you, Rashawn, and thank you, Matthew. Good morning again, everyone. My name is Nicola Simpson Lake, and I will be your presenter for today. So, during our webinar, Improving Your Organization Fields Operation with RGIS Field Apps, I will highlight how work in the field can be customized by using tools that allow you to collect and share information in real or near real time. We look at how these apps can support daily workflow as well as long-term planning. This webinar is being recorded to watch again or to share with your colleagues. There will be a question and answer session at the end of the presentation. Please enter your questions in the question dialog box at the bottom of your screen. If there are questions we did not get a chance to discuss, you can email me at support at spatialvision.com, which is on the screen. And my email will also be provided once again at the end of the presentation. During this session, we will discuss field operations and how they relate to modernization. We will also talk about ArcGIS field maps, ArcGIS quick capture, ArcGIS survey one, two, three, and finally, We'll wrap up with some resources and leave some time for questions. We'll start by talking about field operations in the context of ArcGIS. Today, it's no secret that many organizations are capturing data to support their missions. Oftentimes, capturing data in the field is the backbone of an organization's success. That's why I want us to start our conversation today by talking about modernization. Modernization in the context of mobile solution, in this case, can mean transitioning from something like pen and paper workflows to maybe something a bit more streamlined, like digital workflow that leverages mobile devices. It can also mean transitioning from older legacy digital data capture platforms, something like or ArcPad, to a leaner, faster applications and solution. In either case, modernization provides for several distinct benefits. First, it allows for efficient and accurate data capturing, reducing time spent in the field. It's cost effective as you aren't duplicating efforts by entering data written down in the field when you're back in the office. It streamlines data management processes and reduces time and effort spent on QAQC. You also have access to the most up-to-date data at the end of each day or as the crew reach internet connection. And finally, you can monitor the status of ongoing projects in real or near real time by leveraging our GIS dashboards. ArcGIS is the core that glues mobile data collection solutions together, ensuring that both field and offices, office workers use the same authoritative data, which allows you to reduce errors, boost productivity, and save money. We typically like to describe field work in these phases that you see here on screen. And Esri has a host of focus applications to handle each of them. And as you can see, there are many applications to suit many different use cases depending on your needs. But what if we could reduce the complexity, not only for mobile workers, but for work project authors in the office by combining a lot of these functionality into a single streamlined application? This is where our ArcGIS field maps comes in. Here, Esri added mapping and markup functionality from ArcGIS Explorer, map-centric data collection from Collector, battery optimized and secure tracking from ArcGIS Tracker, mobile tasking and coordination from Workforce, and custom navigation functionality from ArcGIS Navigator. 
Now today, not all features are included, just those found in Explorer, Collector, and Tracker, with Workforce and Navigator being implemented in later releases. ArcGIS Field Maps takes the best from many of our mobile applications and combines into one powerful mobile solution. You might be asking yourself, what about Survey 1, 2, 3 and Quick Capture? I want to make it clear that ArcGIS Survey 1, 2, 3 and Quick Capture are not intended to be replaced by Field Maps. They were built for specific use cases and will continue to be developed in parallel. So which app should I choose? A simple way to think about this is that survey one, two, three should be used for form centric, form centric workflows. Field maps should be used for workflows that require a map centric interface and quick capture should be used for workflows that are button focused where you need to capture data at speed on the fly on the move. This is a simplistic view as there are many parts of each app that do much more than that, but it provides a good starting point to think about modernization of your workflows. For now, let's focus on the map centric portion of our JS field maps and later we'll look at survey one, two, three and quick capture. So Esri has heard a lot from you about enhancements and improvements on some of the existing solutions. Here are some key benefits offered by ArcGIS Field Maps that meet those needs. First, it's a single application to deploy and learn. It allows for single sign-on experience to start capturing data more quickly. Small footprint on your mobile devices consistency in how projects are deployed and data is captured. And finally, it allows for reduction in duplication of content required for offline use. For example, you won't need to create duplicate offline areas or load duplicate map packages for the same area to access through ArcGIS Collector and Navigator in a disconnected environment. With those five key benefits in mind, I'll also like to highlight five key capabilities. Today, you can one, view and explore read-only maps, sketch, markup, and share your drawings, capture data in a familiar format as it's built on the existing collector interface and code base, leverage related tables to conduct a set conduct assess inspection, and finally track your mobile team in real time with the ArcGIS Tracker Premium add-ins. So let's dive a bit deeper into each of these key capabilities. ArcGIS Field Maps is built on the latest ArcGIS Runtime SDK and includes all of the advanced map viewing capabilities or native tools support. That includes advanced symbology with rendering and labeling using the Arcade, which is Esri's ArcGIS expression language. You can drop, you can group layers and annotations. You can have pop-ups with attribute expressions, including support for feature assets. And it also allows for auto updates with layer refresh. Field Maps includes an extensive set of tools for exploring maps as well. These, these include base maps to change your reference layer on the fly, bookmarks to quickly zoom and pan to frequently access locations, a comprehensive legend to understand your maps symbology, a tool for measuring lines and areas in several different units of measurements, the ability to quickly share your map with a number of methods and many more. So with map support and map tools found in ArcGIS Field Maps, you have all the necessary tools at your fingertips to get the job done in one neatly packaged application. Next, we have our map markup capabilities. 
and this is available for use with any map. Using the markup tool, you can sketch a marker or sketch lines and areas. Rectangles and circles that you draw on the map can be recognized and turned into objects that you can pick up and move. Markup act as a layer on the map and can be saved in one or more layers. Once created, they can be symbolized and assign labels and note attributes, as well as toggle on and off at your discretion. Markup is stored on the device and it's available across all maps. You can share markup using AirDrop, by email or text message or within your organization. If you share um, if you share to the organization, it's important to note that you must have publishing privileges as it will create a new graphic layer in your content. Incorporating markup functionality into ArcGIS FEMAP helps you to quickly share notes, areas of interest, and more for targeted area collection without the need to alter the existing data set. So I want to take a quick break from the overview and talk about the use case for ArcGIS field maps. It's estimated that 75% of landowners globally has not been mapped or formally documented. ArcGIS field maps enables landowners to map out their lands. And on screen, you'll see a parcel information for Colombia, and this is in reference to a civil war which displaced many persons and left the country in need of solutions to collect boundary and ownership information. Proper boundary identification enables landowners to maintain legal rights to their land. They can take loans against it to improve or expand the land or legally pass down to their heirs. Streamline workflows and a simple interface allow for quick and efficient field capture to help support this purpose. So the video on screen shows potential landowners in Colombia mapping the boundary of their property using centimeter accurate Trimble viewer receivers. This is part of an initiative called Fit for Purpose Land Administration and the Esri Collector app, which is the precursor to field maps is used here with a receiver to map each parcel with precision. All functionality featured here is also available in ArcGIS field maps. As we've just seen, field maps let you capture features using GPS receivers so that you can quickly and easily improve the accuracy of your authoritative content. Depending on the data you're capturing, you might need better GPS accuracy than what's offered on your smartphone or tablet. Esri work closely with many different GNSS vendors. Each of these vendors are certified for the Apple platform and Esri has worked with them for com compliance with ArcGIS field maps. There are many solutions for leveraging these devices, including pole mounting, backpack mounts, or other types of attachments. ArcGIS field maps brings new capabilities to inspection workflows. When you invest in Esri system of record, we will provide the transaction model support you need to effectively manage change. For example, if you're working on new data collection project or in geographically dispersed areas with no chance of conflict, then a non-version approach works well. You may need to use versioning, however, if inspecting existing assets and need to merge changes. Field maps supports all of these workflows. Understanding the history of previous inspections is important when connected or disconnected. Using relationships will enforce the asset to inspection model so that this is possible. Ezra has also introduced new capabilities like smart forms that lets you organize the information that needs to be updated. In this instance, the information, the form is organized into three sections. Information about the inspector, the inspection and traditional inspection attributes that need to be filled out each time. 
Finally, based on answers to questions, additional field map field may need to be filled out. For example, when we select yes for hydrant flush, additional fields appear based on that selection. And this conditional visibility can be developed with smart farms in ArcGIS field maps. ArcGIS field maps utilize the battery saving location tracking capabilities of ArcGIS Tracker. It supports the same licensing model as ArcGIS Tracker, but with one app to deploy. To simplify turning on and off tracking, a map card appears in the browser map screen that you can directly turn on and off tracking. If you tap on the card, you can open the map as well as it will have all the simple map viewing capabilities of field maps. You'll be able to open other maps in the app and with tracking capabilities available and turn on and off the tracking layer to display or hide the tracks. As we recently added new functionality as well for support with Apple Watches, as well as Google Assistant on Android. They've also added the ability to set a track duration. As you can see here, you can set either four, eight or 12 hours duration uh, until you turn tracking off. To recap, we just saw how ArcGIS field maps enables you to one, view and explore read-only maps, sketch markup and share your drawings, capture data in a familiar format, leverage related tables to conduct asset inspection, and five, track your mobile team in real time with the ArcGIS Tracker Premium add-in. Now let's examine the mobile application in action. Here we can see the splash screen for ArcGIS field maps. We can either log in with ArcGIS Online or ArcGIS Enterprise. We can specify a new URL for our organization, or we can scan a QR code to very quickly navigate to our organization's enterprise portal. From here, we can log in with a built-in user account or select Enterprise Login to log in with our enterprise. For now, let's select Skip and check out some of the read-only access available in ArcGIS field maps. Here you can see our browse map screen. At the top, the Grand Teton National Park has a download arrow next to it. As you'll see, selecting that will immediately download this map to our device for offline use. On the right side is an overflow menu where we can check out map details, check for updates, and remove the download from our device. By selecting map details, we can review some of the capabilities and description of our map. By selecting the map card, we can enter the map view for this particular offline map. By zooming into an area on the map, we can start to see some of the symbology available. By selecting this post office, we can review some of the um, My apologies on that. We'll watch this video once more. Here we can see the splash screen for ArcGIS field maps. We can either log in with ArcGIS Online or ArcGIS Enterprise. We can specify a new URL for our organization, or we can scan a QR code to very quickly navigate to our organization's enterprise portal. From here, we can log in with a built-in user account or select Enterprise Login to log in with our enterprise. For now, let's select Skip and check out some of the read-only access available in ArcGIS field maps. Here you can see our browse map screen. At the top, the Grand Teton National Park has a download arrow next to it. As you'll see, selecting that will immediately download this map to our device for offline use. On the right side is an overflow menu where we can check out map details, check for updates, and remove the download from our device. By selecting map details, we can review some of the capabilities and description of our map. By selecting the map card, we can enter the map view for this particular offline map. By zooming into an area on the map, we can start to see some of the symbology available. By selecting this post office, we can review some of the attributes that are available here. In the top right-hand corner, we'll see an overflow menu where we can access a number of options. Here, 
We'll select bookmarks and navigate over to Phelps Lake. Now I'd like to demonstrate the markup capabilities. If we zoom in here, I can quickly sketch on the map a circle of an area I'd like to identify. Here we can select a label and create a new one, in this case called AOI for area of interest. We can then add any associated notes for this particular markup. In this case, we'll say check this area. Once that's complete, we can edit the symbology and even add a fill to our circle. Next, we can tap and hold and move the markup and sketch wherever we would like. Next, we can draw a line. Here, you'll see that it's automatically recognized it as a line, and I can add an arrow as such. We can use our existing label that we created to change the symbology. We can also share our markup. We can either share it as a markup file or as a screenshot. Now, let's go back to our home screen and check out some of the functionality when we log in with ArcGIS Online. Here, we'll sign into our organization using our username and password. When we've authenticated, we'll be brought to our Browse Maps screen. Here we can see any maps and groups that we have available to us. At the top right corner, we can access some additional details available. Here, we can set our location settings as well as any other general settings, including auto sync and our units of measurement. At the top, we can turn on our tracks. We can add four, eight, or 12 hour tracking durations. For now, we'll select eight hours. For this project, I've been placed in charge of assessing the condition of some trails and signs in Grand Teton National Park. Right away, you'll see the interface is very similar to our GIS collector. And in fact, you'll see the markups that we just created. By tapping layers in the upper right hand corner, we can view turn on and turn off the individual layers for this map. We can use the search functionality to search for an address, location, or other attributes. We can also access other areas in our overflow menu. By selecting base map, I can quickly change our reference layer to something like imagery. I wanna show you one other unique feature of our JS field maps, the ability to edit and batch. Here, by selecting edit multiple, I can select a number of different points and we can edit them all at one time without having to go through and edit each individual point. As I've selected all the items I'd like to edit, tapping continue in the top right will allow me to edit and change them all to a wolf species for these incidental observations. I can submit the record, and now we have those changes submitted in batch. At the trailhead, I've noticed that there's a damaged sign. Let's go ahead and capture a point. Here we can navigate to our damaged signs and we can start collecting attribute data after we've added a point. Here we'll change my sign condition to damaged, and you'll notice that a new group has appeared based on that selection. If we change it back to good, you'll notice that that group no longer appears. Now that we've selected our sign as damaged, we can collect additional attribute information related to it. Once we've collected all of our attributes, we can go ahead and submit our record. We can view all the attributes for the record that we've just completed, and we can go ahead and make any additional edits. For example, if I've come back and I want to change the status of repair at a later time, we can go in and edit the status of repair and change that to completed. You'll notice that a date of repair field pops up as a result. From here, we can go ahead and submit our changes, and we can move on to our next item. With smart forms and with our JS field maps, you can streamline the process of data capture out in the field. Let's recap. So we just saw how our JS field maps enables read only map viewing, sketch and sharing markup tracking as well as capturing data with a map centric interface. Let's move on to the next component of our JS field maps, which is the web application. The field maps web app provides a one stop shop browser based web tool that's integrated with our GIS. The web app is integrated in arc in app launch launcher sorry for quick access, as seen here on screen. It provides a centralized experience for deploying maps. 
It allows you to configure map capabilities by modifying default values, features templates, and creating smart forms. It streamlines how you manage offline capabilities without having to leave the app. And finally, you can share, your share and deploy your maps to your working group to quickly get started. So now that we have a good idea of what Field Maps is, let's talk about how you can access it. With a Field Worker Creator or GIS professional user type, you can create and update data, add attachments and streamline multi-app workflows. With a Viewer user type, you can view dynamic web maps, harness offline maps and create markups. With ArcGIS Tracker Premium License, you can enable location tracking in your workflows. And with ArcGIS Collector License, you can create and edit data, leverage high accuracy, and add attachments in connected or disconnected environments. So now we have discussed the use of field maps for your map-based workflows, but what about when you just need to collect simple spatial data with a few attributes and you don't have time for your field workers to fill out multi-question form. For this, we have Quick Capture, a rapid data collection app with a big button user interface. Using Quick Capture, you can record a field worker's location, an image, power data from the device, which is the date and time, all in the background with one click of a button. The locations can be points, lines, or polygons, and your field workers can collect data at speed, even from a moving vehicle. One major benefit of Quick Capture is that it cuts down training time for your field workers. To demonstrate how intuitive this app is, I'm going to switch over to the mobile app and show you before I go further with my overview. So in this scenario, I've been hired by the Zambian Census Department to gather the locations of residential and commercial buildings in the city of Lusaka. It's important to have an accurate record of the location and zoning of the buildings in a city so that the Census Department can efficiently deploy its enumerators to conduct the population survey. So here we'll show- a When I open the app, I can see the projects available on my device and open the pre-enumeration building census to start collecting. First, I'm prompted to enter my name, which is going to be associated with all the building points I collect in the field. The app has remembered my last submission for this question, so I can select it and get to collecting points. I start down the street and the first building I come to is a single family home, so I select the corresponding button. With that one action, a point is added to my map with attributes indicating my current latitude and longitude, my username, the date and time, the designation of the building as residential, and the occupancy as single family. I didn't have to slow my walk or the speed of the car if I'm collecting from the road, and I can move on to the next building. This is a storefront, so I select commercial, and so on. Eventually, I come to an apartment building and need to capture the number of housing units within the building so that the staff in the census office can evenly divide the work assignments among census interviewers later. When I select the button for an apartment building, I'm prompted to enter the number of units. In this case, I can tell by the number of mailboxes that the building contains 20 households, so that attribute will be updated in my recorded building point. One other feature of Quick Capture is that I can view the map where I've been submitting data to ensure that I'm not collecting building points that another field worker has already recorded. Here, I also have 30 seconds after each point is recorded to delete or adjust my captured point. This way, if I've made a mistake or I want to more clearly center the point to a building offset from the road, I can do so before the point is submitted. Now that you've seen how Quick Capture functions for the field worker and how easily I was able to start collecting data, I'll dive further into how this project was configured and some of the additional functionality that's available. So you've seen a quick video on our 
Quick Captures Simple Button Based Interface which is especially important when you have many field workers to manage or you need to get out into the field quickly. The app overall increases the efficiency of your field operation, saving your organization time and money. Another benefit of using ArcGIS Quick Capture is that like all the field apps, it is part of the ArcGIS system. Therefore, if you're logged into your ArcGIS online or enterprise account in the mobile app, updates made to the project in the Quick Capture Designer are pushed to your device automatically. As you're in the field collecting data, it is being synced in real time to a feature service shared with your organization. So your supervisor can track the building, track the building survey progress using an ArcGIS dashboard and an analyst can start analyzing the data as it is captured. If you're collecting data in a disconnected environment, your points will be saved on your device until you're back online, at which point they will be uploaded. So I mentioned the benefits of syncing from Quick Capture Designer to your device automatically. And this is just one way the Quick Capture Designer simplifies the process of creating a project. The designer is a no code drag and drop interface accessed from your web browser, which lets you create quick capture projects from your existing feature layers and configure your big button interfaces, appearance, and the data sources for each attribute. For each button, you can set the JS attributes such as speed altitude, direction, and time of capture to be auto-filled with the data captured in the background on the device. There are over 40 device variables available, including some that allow you to record information on the provider, datums and offsets, as well as errors and accuracy of your GPS. In addition to the data collection in the background, you can configure user inputs, which provide the functionality to prompt users for additional information. The, there are two types, the project user input, which is how the name is entered in the beginning of our demo. And we have the button user input, which is how the number of units in the apartment building is entered. The user inputs, The user inputs can be required or give the user the option to skip inputting a value. This can be helpful in cases like recording the number of units in a building when you may not always be able to determine the number and would rather the field worker leave it blank than guess. Finally, user's input can be constrained or use data validate rules. So for example, you could configure a drop-down list of choices or require the user response to be formatted as an email address. Now there are three types of user inputs. We have the coded value domain, range domain, and user defined. Quick Capture allows you to collect multiple observations at the same time. In this example, we are creating a map of road conditions for biking and can capture multiple lines at the same time. We're creating a line feature for the bike path on the right side of the street, and then collecting two more line features for the sidewalks on either side of the street. These features can be captured at the same time in one feature layer with attributes to differentiate the different lines, or they can be captured into different feature layers if we want layer with all of our bike path data and one with sidewalk data. If we have attribute values that are mutually exclusive, such as the level of difficulty for a bike trail, we can group the buttons to ensure the data collector only select one for the feature they are recording. In this case, the trail is either paved or not paved. And then the field workers need to choose between labeling the trail features as advanced, intermediate, or beginner. So now that I've walked through some of the functionalities available in Quick Capture, I'll show you how to configure a project and take advantage of these features using the Quick Capture design.
from the Quick Capture Designer are created from existing feature services. If I go into the project settings, I can see the layer that was used to generate this project. This layer determines, determines which fields I'll be collecting data for, and this is where my points will ultimately be stored. When I select one of the buttons, I can make edits to its appearance in the first tab. I can change the text size, I can change the style, or add a fill color. In the data tab, I can see the target feature layer where my points will be stored, and if I wanted, I could point this button to a different layer. For example, if I wanted to keep my residential and commercial building points in separate layers. I can also enable the ability to take a photo, and one of the options here is to hide the camera preview. With the camera preview hidden, when the button is pressed, a photo will be captured automatically. This is useful if the device is mounted on a windshield and you're moving quickly, so you don't want to spend time setting up the photo. You just want to capture it with the one button press and keep moving. Finally, I can configure the fields that will be filled when this commercial building button is pressed. I can select device variable for our horizontal accuracy and choose from all of the 40 different variables that we have available. Next, I want to capture the building type, which I'll use a coded value because I know for each time this button is pressed, the value is going to be commercial. The enumerator name field is going to be filled with my project user input. So this is when I was prompted to enter my name when I first opened the project. Finally, in the multi-unit apartment building button, I have the number of units, and this is going to be the button user input. So I can go in and configure this with a label to prompt my enumerator what they're going to be filling into this box. When I'm done configuring my project, I can save it. And then when I go back to the survey on my device, I can see that there's a project update available. With one click, I have the update and I can get back to collecting my building points. Now, before we move on to survey one, two, three, I want to highlight two more features of Quick Capture. First, oriented imagery. With oriented imagery enabled, you can take photos in the app as usual, but more background information is collected so that you can see on a map the georeference field of view for the image. In this GIF, you can see how the map highlights what is visible in the image and updates as you pan and zoom. There are many potential applications for this feature with some listed here on screen. For example, if you're conducting a damage assessment and take a picture of a building from the road, the oriented imagery will more clearly tie your observation to the correct building, and it can be validated with satellite imagery. Another feature of Quick Capture is its integration with SiteScan. With this integration, you can use SiteScan to fly your drone and capture imagery, and at the same time, have Quick Capture rapidly record the locations of assets or issues and upload them to ArcGIS. The key advantage of this integration is that instead of waiting for your drone to land before you can process the imagery, you can capture and share imagery derived information while your drone is still in the air. So now we'll move on to our final app, which is ArcGIS Survey 123. So I want to revisit this, this slide on the different uses four or three field apps. So far we've talked about field maps for your map centric data collection needs and a quick capture for rapid app speed data collection with a single button press. Survey 123 is designed to support your form centric data gathering workflows. So Survey 123 is a system for designing surveys collecting data across the platform from the web to the desktop and mobile app and analyze survey results with pre-configured data visualization features. Unlike other smart form solutions in the market, Survey123 forms are location aware and allow you to bring all your data into ArcGIS for further visualization and analysis 
to support decision making. Smart forms can be used to collect research data, conduct inspections, assess damage, and more. Survey 123 will make your workflows more accurate and efficient. It will save you time collecting data in the field and allow analysts in the office to monitor and work with data as it's collected in real time. Survey 123 also reduces the chance of human error in your workflow with features like pre-populated fields and eliminate the need to digitize paper forms. I'm going to walk through the typical workflow of creating a survey. I have two options. We have the web designer or we have Survey123 Connect. However, for the purpose of our webinar, we'll be focusing on the web designer today with a brief intro to Survey123 Connect. Survey123 Connect is a desktop application where you can use a familiar Microsoft Excel sheet to create an XLS form, Connect. Connect gives you the maximum level of control over your form design and you can set the content, look, and behavior of your survey. Before I get into making a form, I want to highlight the local web installer for Survey123. Organizations are sometimes required to work in completely disconnected environments where they have no access to the internet, or they may be required to host the ArcGIS Survey123 website and Survey123 REST API on their own infrastructure. This is possible using a local install of the Survey123 REST API and website, which enables creating and publishing surveys from Survey123 Connect or the website all on your own infrastructure. So now I'm going to get into creating the form. In this scenario, let's say I'm still working for the Census Department and I've been tasked with creating the survey for interviewers to take out into the field. I'm going to use Survey123 Web Designer to modernize your workflow and adapt paper from form to smart form. I've added some questions to this survey already. To add an additional question, I just select from the different question types and drag one into the survey. I'm going to add a map question first. Here, the enumerators can record the location of the house where they're conducting the interview as either a point, line, or polygon. I'll set it to prompt for the device's location so that the enumerator doesn't have to manually find the house on the map. The Survey123 web designer allows you to adjust the appearance of your questions. So for this single choice question where I want to see all the options on screen, I can choose between vertical, horizontal, or a more compact version of horizontal, or if I'm doing the census on a small device. Once you've added your questions, you can set rules based on the responses. For example, if a person being interviewed says they're not Zambian, the survey will prompt the interviewer to ask what country they're from. But if they are Zambian, this question won't be shown. This makes the interview process more efficient, as the enumerator does not have to sort through questions that are not applicable to the interviewee. Finally, I want to show one of the editing capabilities for a single or multiple choice question. In this case, we're looking for the name of the country where the interviewee is from, but it would take too long to type every country name into these choice boxes. Here we can use batch edit and add the choices in plain text with each new line creating a new choice. I've copy and pasted a list of all the countries, and you can see now they're each filled in as a choice. I'll also enable autocomplete. This way, the interviewer can search through the drop down list for the country name. These are just some of the features in the web designer that streamline the form creation process for your analyst so that your workers can get into the field more quickly and start collecting data more efficiently. So, the demo I just gave was an example of a private survey, which is ideal when the group of users who will be filling out the form is known such as your um, census employees, and you want to keep track of who is submitting each form. Survey123 also has the ability to create public surveys, which will be shared with everyone, and respondents don't need to log in with an RGS account. These are ideal for crowdsourcing initi initiative when you want anyone in the public to submit data. 
With either survey type, you're able to publish reports and share visualization of the question and answer. So even though you only want your census workers filling out the census form, you can use the analysis tools in the survey one, two, three site to create a report for the public to see demographics of their area. Now, as I mentioned, there are two ways to create a smart form with survey one, two, three. We just saw the web designer, but if you want to make a more complex survey or just want to generate control over, sorry, if you want greater control over the survey appearance, you'll want to use survey one, two, three, connect. Connect makes you use XLS forms, which are configured through a familiar Microsoft Excel spreadsheet. With an XLS form, you can set conditional visibility of questions and groups, perform calculations on survey inputs on the fly, set unique question constraints and more. So I'd like to highlight a final component of survey one, two, three before we wrap up this webinar, which is the inbox feature which allows for field workers to use a map or list view to explore and append data to existing features. This is a way to create assignments using survey one, two, three, so that field workers only see the work they need to complete if there's a specific set of features assigned to them. There are a number of new features for the inbox view, including direction and distance indicators shown in this GIF. This allows field workers to see which of their assigned features they are closest to, further simplifying the process of identifying which features they need to survey. So now we have given you an introduction to all three of our field apps with field maps for your map centric data collection, quick capture for app speed data collection with a single button press and survey one, two, three for your form-centric data gathering workflows. We have reached the end of our webinar and as stated earlier, we will leave you with a few resources on apps discussed today to get you started. A mail will be sent after our webinar to all attendees with access to these. I want to thank you once again for joining us today and welcome, welcome you to ask questions. Thank you very much, Nicola. Um, very extensive, very extensive. Um, learned about a lot of the, the apps available um, with the RGIS, with the RGIS suite. Um, currently not seeing any questions in the chat, but uh, we have prepared a few FAQs um, that you could probably share with the team um, while they could share their questions in the interim. So I'm gonna start by asking you, um, Will we be able to import existing collector apps into field maps to preserve photos captured in collector? Thank you for that question, Matthew. Yes, you will be able to do so. Maps that you use in collector will work in ArcGIS field maps. As mentioned during the presentation, field maps are built upon the collector code base so that all maps that are shared will work. Okay. Right, so I hope that helps. And um, another question for you, uh, do we need to make adjustments to our collector maps so that they will work properly in our field maps? Thank you again. You will not have to make any adjustment at all. As mentioned before, um, field map is built on the same coding as collector. So whatever maps you have in collector can be used in your field maps as well. Okay, all right, so that's also good information to have. And the uh, last question I have here, um, unless you have any more, is which field map would be best for citizens um, to sign applications where you need anonymous access and the ability, and the ability to review submissions? Um, for this one, Survey123 would be the best app as it allows for anonymous sign-on. Um, you can, push your surveys out and persons can access it without having RJS online login. They can answer and submit their information and you, the person with control over the system, would be able to view all the information submitted. All right, it sounds, it sounds like excellent for a census probably. Perfect for census, actually, yes. 
Um, well, I had those three questions with me. Um, I, I'll leave the floor for a minute. Should anyone have any questions, you can always type it in the chat or in the Q&A section that we can attend to. Um, but um, definitely a good presentation for all the applications available um, in terms of streamlining uh, the field operations within, within the organizations. A, a few use cases also shared um, here would definitely appreciate. And um, if, they, if you can't generate a question now and um, should have any questions, uh, you could always send an email to um, support at spatialvision.com um, to have those questions answered. And also using this opportunity to remind you, as, as Rashawn had shared earlier, um, that there's a new channel uh, for tech support. Um, that is the Esri Support Spatial Caribbean app, which you can find in the Google Play or App Store, um, whichever way you're looking. So you can use that channel for support. Um, there's also a, a phone line um, that you can call No. Um, that number I'll share that with you is 876-15-0104, um, 876-615-0104 for direct contact to the Esri Latham Support Center. Um, question here from Delia Fletcher. Um, she has been looking at the survey one, two, three in the fields, and she noticed that it does, it does not use the fill-in words feature while typing, so you can make type of errors without realizing. Um, something that I can assist with me before. Um, Delia, for this, uh, you could use constraints. So by restricting what persons can submit in that dialogue section, that would um, allow for it's the It's 11 o'clock. errors. Especially when you're, when you're typing fast. Okay. So not sure. But um hopefully Nicole and um I guess if anything we can also share that um with Ezra team, that question with the Ezra team. Yes. If it's something that they could look into. So I think that's a good use case to share with them. So, but what is it should use? The constraint. Yeah. yeah. You right. could populate populate your field with set information that you want them to enter, and that would somewhat combat this error that you're having. But we could always contact you to discuss this further as well. All right, so uh, we will we'll share that contact with Nicola should we have any further solutions to that. Uh, <coughs> um, all right, so. And, uh, if I can just jump in and notice, and notice um, Jason Stewart had raised a hand for some while. I'm not sure if it was a question or a comment. Mm -hmm. Oh, um, uh, I don't know. I guess Jason could probably type in the chat. Uh, we missed the raise hand feature there. And, and Trevor seems to be saying about autocomplete. Uh, I think this is in it's a follow up to Dahlia's um, question. I guess possibly. So thanks for that, Trevor. Um, we're at the top of the hour, however. Um, uh not seeing any more questions coming in um as i said should you have any more questions you can always reach out to reach out to nicola at support at spatialvision.com and she'll be open to answering there and um Dela, uh, nicola will reach out to you um uh, regarding the query all right um so with that said uh again thank you all uh for joining this session um very very informative um it will be on our youtube channel on friday uh, or by friday i should say um, so you can always revisit it there. Uh, Roshan, you have any last comment? Um, no, not, not, nothing outside of what I've said is just to reiterate the points, which is um, one, you know, encouraging folks to register for the UC, two, encouraging folks to take advantage of the support, tech support that is here now, you download the support app. Um, and we thank you for joining us and we ask of you to give us feedback of what you would want for our next webinar which will be the last Wednesday of July. So um, welcome suggestions um, if, if within Esri for this particular, um, well, Esri or any other brand that we carry, anything that's within the geospatial technology that we carry, we can certainly shape a webinar for you. Um, but most importantly, thank you for joining us. Thank you for continuing to be a part of this webinar series. 
uh, we look forward to further conversations in the near future. Right. Um, and just to add to Rashawn, so he said last Wednesday, that's July 28th, and the tentative topic that we're looking at is modernizing your land administration with parts of public. So um, once we send out that link, should you know anybody that's interested um, in a topic of such, we want to share that with you, you can also share that with them. Um, thanks for joining us again, and we'll meet again on the 28th of July. Uh, have a great day. Have a great week. Right, bye from the team. Bye-bye, everyone.